Hello. This is R.J. Deacon reading the Supreme Court of the United States opinion syllabus in Taggart v. Lorenzen, certiorari to the United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit, argued April 24, 2019, decided June 3, 2019. Petitioner Bradley Taggart formerly owned an interest in an Oregon company. That company and two of its other owners, who are among the respondents here, filed suit in Oregon State Court, claiming that Taggart had breached the company's operating agreement. Before trial, Taggart filed for bankruptcy under Chapter 7 of the Bankruptcy Code. At the conclusion of that proceeding, the Federal Bankruptcy Court issued a discharge that order, order that released Taggart from liability for most pre-bankruptcy debts. After the discharge order issued, the Oregon State Court entered a judgment against Taggart in the pre-bankruptcy suit and awarded attorney's fees to respondents. Taggart returned to the federal bankruptcy court seeking civil contempt sanctions against respondents for collecting attorney's fees in violation of the discharge order. The bankruptcy court ultimately held respondents in civil contempt. The bankruptcy appellate panel vacated the sanctions, and the Ninth Circuit affirmed the panel's decision. Applying a subjective standard the Ninth Circuit concluded that a creditor's good-faith belief that the discharge order does not apply to the creditor's claim precludes a finding of contempt, even if the creditor's belief is unreasonable. The Supreme Court held, uh, vacated and remanded, and Justice Breyer delivered the opinion for a unanimous court. A court may hold a creditor in civil contempt for violating a discharge order if there is no fair ground of doubt as to whether the order barred the creditor's conduct. There was italics for no fair ground of doubt there. This conclusion rests on a long-standing interpretive principle. When a statutory term is obviously transplanted from another legal source, it brings the old soil with it. That's Hall versus Hall. Here, the bankruptcy statute specifying that a discharge order operates as an injunction 11 U.S.C. Section 524A2, and that a court may issue any order or judgment that is necessary or appropriate to carry out other bankruptcy provisions, Section 105A, bring with them the old soil that has long governed how courts enforce injunctions. In cases outside the bankruptcy context, this court has said that civil contempt should not be resorted to where there is a fair ground of doubt as to the wrongfulness of the defendant's conduct. That'd be California Artificial Stone Paving Corporation versus Molitor. This standard is generally an objective one. A party's subjective belief that she was complying with an order ordinarily would not insulate her from civil contempt if that belief was objectively unreasonable. Subjective intent, however, is not always irrelevant. Civil contempt sanctions may be warranted when a party acts in bad faith, and a party's good faith may help to determine an appropriate sanction. These traditional civil contempt principles apply straightforwardly to the bankruptcy discharge context. Under the fair ground of doubt standard, civil contempt may be appropriate when the creditor violates a discharge order based on an objectively unreasonable understanding of the discharge order or the statutes that govern its scope. The standard applied by the Ninth Circuit is inconsistent with traditional civil contempt principles under which parties cannot be insulated from a finding of civil contempt based on their subjective good faith. Taggart, meanwhile, argues for a standard that would operate much like a strict liability standard, but his proposal often may lead creditors to seek advanced determinations as to whether debts have been discharged creating the risk of additional federal litigation, additional costs, and additional delays. His proposal, which follows the standard some courts have used to remedy violations of automatic stays, also ignores key differences in text and purpose between the statutes governing automatic stays and discharge orders. Again, the decision below is vacated and remanded, and Justice Breyer delivered the opinion for a unanimous court. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to get a hold of the podcast, we can be reached at RhodesScholar80 at gmail.com. That's R-O-A-D-S and 8-0.